disposable cast member at that time. She's not, if Lisa Barlow did the same things, I don't think Lisa Barlow would be fired. Ramona wasn't fired until she was. Kristen and Stasi were only fired because of the 2020, you know, racial reckoning, as this article here says, as the lawyers are saying. And they, I've said a million times, they would not have fired Stasi and Kristen and, and today. So that is what it is. I'm just saying, you know, just own up to it. Just own up to it, Bravo. You know, it's also a control thing. It's it's the network saying, like, you will not tell us who we're going to have on our network and who we're not going to have on our network. And yeah, now that, you know, Scandival is a big hit and all this, we want uh, we want to go ahead with this show. I mean, this past week's episode, this whole thing was addressed by Kristen. I mean, look, it's not a good day for LVP, I'm sure. It's not a good day for Lala. I'm sure it's not a good day for Kristen. We just watched on the TV. The episode is basically can be used as evidence now is, is basically saying like, you know, Kristen's very upset. She said it was the worst time in her life, which it's kind of looking at it, I think, from the opposite way of the view. But, you know, they basically address this as if it wasn't even a thing. And now we have this lawsuit. It's like. I'm just like, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, it's, I think it is a bad fact that the Valley's on and that Kristen's back on. And, and I'm not saying they shouldn't be. I'm just saying, I'm talking from a pure legal point of view, applying the letter of the law to the facts of this case. I think Faith has a good case and I think she is going to get money. And I think Carolyn Manzo is going to get money too. So we're going to see what happens. I'm sure Kristen, based on this episode airing, felt some type of cathartic, like, I've spoken my truth and thank God this is behind me. It doesn't seem like it is. So don't shoot the messenger, guys. I'm just giving you my opinion of what I really think is going to happen. Now, Brandy, you know, Caroline, everyone's probably saying she's not going to get money because the producer just said, well, of course, Lisa Shannon, who's high up at Bravo, is saying all of this. And it's probably true. I still think Caroline has a great case and is going to get money. So we all know her case we now have this development that Lisa Shannon, a producer on Girls Trip, has spoken out um, that, uh, you know, yes, Carolyn felt disrespected, but she was never sexually violated. If you remember, you know, Manzo is claiming that she, uh, Brandy, put her down on the couch. She held her down with her body. We know Caroline is smaller. Brandy is bigger. And she mounted her and she held her down. She squeezed her cheeks together and uh, she thrust on top of Manzo uh, in like a, like a humping manner. And uh, Miss Glanville has stuck her tongue down Miss Manzo's throat. Um, Lisa Shannon, the producer, is saying that Caroline told production about this, told them about Brandy's actions. She said this triggers childhood memories past memories of trauma, memories from 50 years ago. But when she told production about this, she never mentioned assault. Lisa Shannon said once they were new that the primary concern was making sure that Miss Manzo felt safe. Miss Manzo said she felt safe. She wanted to continue filming. She says, I do not want to have Brandy sent home, Shannon says. Um, they did not leave her alone with Brandy at night, though. The next morning, after not being left alone with Brandy, she said, I still feel safe. I feel your support. I'm dealing with something that burned my soul for 50 years. 50 years ago, I'm good. I want to continue filming. Phaedra Parks has been speaking out, saying she sees the events much differently than Manzo suggested. We were all having fun. No one knew about your past. How could we know? They said Manzo did not fly right out of there and fly home. Brandy was sent to a hotel and they said Manzo only flew home when she found out that the whole cast was going to visit Brandy at the hotel. She got mad. And Manzo said that she did not want to film with Brandy and they honored that and said, fine, you don't have to film with Brandy. Don't worry about it. Brandy has denied the whole thing. Again, this is how it is when it's a lawsuit. There's people on this side. There's people on that side. Do I think some of these are good facts for Manzo? I do not. Do I think Manzo is going to get money? Yes. Do I think any of these cases are going to see the inside of a courtroom? I hope so, because if they're settled, there's going to be NDAs, and we're never going to know exactly how much for what. But I really do think all these are going to be settled on the steps of a courthouse. You know, it it 
goes back to what I was saying. I still think to me, this coupled, I think lawsuits coupled with ratings being down for Housewives, I think this is the beginning of the end for Housewives. I have said this. I want to be happy. I want to have a smile on my face. I'm just being honest. That's what I think. I can't get that out of my head. I don't think anything's happening now. I don't think anything's happening next year. I think by 2029, in five years, I think Housewives will be gone. That is my opinion. I am not changing it. I am sticking to it. I mean, we now have a, every single franchise of Housewives way under 1 million viewers, except for Beverly Hills. New Jersey last season was over one, and I was anxiously waiting to see in May what happens. I could see Jersey coming back and being right there along with Beverly Hills and having over a million. But I can see people being like, we already fucking know Teresa and Melissa are not going to speak all season and we're tuning out. There are uh, so many of you listening that will always watch Housewives, but the general masses are not. Potomac is way down. And what's happening is this whole thing where we're spacing it out. We have, Jer things are not being filmed now. They made a mistake with Jersey and that they filmed it right away and now they held it to May. They filmed Dubai right away and now they held it to June. They've learned and now they're spacing out. That's the whole reason Shannon needed to borrow $75,000 from John Jansen to have her facelift because she said she was used to getting two checks a year and now she's only getting one because they're not filling at RHOC twice a year. Everything is slowing down. They're trying to create better ratings by having us want it more. I personally think that's just going to backfire. I think the longer something's off the air, the more we don't care. And waiting for these big gaps, we're only going to have one franchise on at a time. We're going to stagger things. I mean, like two at a time, but we're going to stagger things. I think the writing is on the wall. Beverly Hills Housewives is up. Vanderpump is up. For a spinoff, The Valley ain't doing great, but... I think the ratings plus these mounting lawsuits, this is going to cost money. I mean, and I don't even think Caroline Manzo would settle out of court for a million dollars. But if they do, we have a million for Caroline, a million for Faith, a million for Leah. That's like three million. And I'm being the bottom line. That's a lot of money. So there's a lot of money. Garago says more are coming. I just think with all these things and everything, I just think we are witnessing the beginning of the end for all of us. That is my opinion. I hope I'm wrong too. We have other guests on this podcast like Sandra Bernhard and we just had Billy Bush and we just had Lisa Lisa. I mean, we've had Suzanne Summers and Fran Drescher. We will never be 100% Bravo podcast for that very reason. I think anyone that has Bravo in their title or anything, I think all your eggs are in one basket and what is going to happen when this goes away because everything changes. Let's all ride the wave together. We had a great 20 years. I hope we have 20 more. I don't think it's going to happen. That's my opinion. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be negative. Everything is wonderful. I'm having a great Sunday. And the only other thing to leave this with is that... Um, I'm sure you saw Lori Peterson. Lori Peterson's son, Josh, has passed away from RHOC. We all remember Josh. I mean, he grew up. We all know he had substance abuse issues his whole life, really. He leaves behind a daughter, which is so sad. And Lori wrote, Josh, I love you so much, and I will miss you terribly. I will forever be your mama bear and mama dukes. And every time the clock turns 11-11, this is really sad. I will expect your call to tell me to make a wish what will I wish for now? My heart is with you and I pray you have found peace that you so deserve. Heaven has gained the coolest angel and you have gained your freedom at last, sweet boy. Love always and forever, mom. I mean, look, this is sad, okay? Losing a child has got to be one of the hardest things in life, if not the hardest thing. She welcomed him in 1988. Um, she also has a daughter, Ashley and Sophie, and Josh had a daughter, Kennedy, who it looks like Lori has been raising regardless. So my heart goes out to her. I mean, substance abuse disorder is a real thing. I don't believe we know how Josh... They've sadly lost. I don't think we know if Josh died by an overdose or by taking his own life, but I don't know if it matters. It's This is sad. My heart goes out to Lori. And by the way, one more thing. I'm all over the place. But Brandy has actually spoken out after Lisa Shannon has said all of this stuff. You know, I guess people are like, hey, this 
proves, first of all, it doesn't prove anything. The case is still alive and well. This isn't like, oh, Caroline's nails in her coffin. No, they're going to come back with other things. This is how a lawsuit works. But Brandy tweeted, am I happy? No. Do I feel vindicated? No. I'm fucking more pissed than ever. What these producer, producers do to make a TV show is disgraceful and disgusting. I beg for them to intervene. I almost died. It took a lawsuit. I'm not okay. I don't know what she means by I almost died. I think it just means that she went into a dark, deep, dark depression after this happened and said, roll tape. And we're not seeing what happened. And this narrative is out there that Brandy did this. And she's saying she didn't do this. This is a quick hit. This is not a whole episode. It is a Sunday. Did you enjoy the episode I shared this morning with Isaiah Mizrahi? Go and listen to that. We will always have Just David. Always. This isn't going anywhere. Whoever doesn't like it, I don't give a fuck. Whoever loves it, which is most of you, love you all. I do love you all. And tomorrow is Monday. And should we have a housewife on tomorrow? Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode. Go and listen to everything you missed this week. This was a quick hit. I love you all. Happy Sunday.